going to do in this lecture is we need to be a lot more careful with our language and our understanding of what kind of an object differentiation is. Um, we'll see this 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 may not help everyone. Um, I, I'd like to think it, it will. It's kind of a, a kind of a bigger picture understanding of differentiation and stuff like it um, that hopefully can be helpful. So in maths and it, it's because of later on like we're going to have loads of different types of differentiation so we're going to have to be uh, a lot more careful basically so in math 6012 you get away with differentiate and anti-differentiate and uh, math 6040 you need to be a lot more precise and you need to understand what this symbol ddx means so we've already got a function that's okay um we've seen inputs and outputs both real numbers or both vectors but as maths gets more technical, you need to allow for more complicated objects for inputs and outputs. So, um, so rather than assuming that a function maps numbers to numbers, we might write that the function maps, so this is R to R, this is real number in, real number out. Or for, um, I think what we might have seen in chapter two, we could have written a matrix, well, with a kind of an understanding that we really would mean multiplication by a matrix is R to the um, M, which is uh, uh, vectors to vectors. So you want to be more careful about specifying what are the inputs, what are the outputs. So in general, if you want to write that G is a function and it sends A to B, it, this is how you write all oh, the inputs are A and the outputs are B. Now, now we are, now I'm going to ignore a lot of technicalities here because uh, we'll be here all day otherwise. And those technicalities are the kind of things that pure mathematicians are really interested in, but we're not. We're engineers. Well, you're engineers anyway. So what I want you to do is to imagine the collection of all possible functions from real numbers to real numbers. Now, really what we're saying is that we're going to, and it's a bit confusing, take we're going to have some kind of a function where the input is a function. So you're going to put a function in and you're going to get a function out. Okay, so we can consider a function as a possible input to another function. So we're thinking about, and this is how we write this, uh, something that takes in a function and spits out a function. So you got a function in, say, f, and what gets sent out would be you'd write it phi of f, function in, function out. If you were doing um, kind of electronic engineering, this wouldn't be weird. This would just be signal processing. So on the left-hand side, you have some kind of a signal and you do some kind of process because uh, ultimately like these things are just kind of graphs. So you have a graph, which you can think of as a signal on the left and you get another signal out on the right. So um, we'll, we'll give some kind of an example here. It might be, some kind of a wave and suppose maybe the output describes in some sense the frequencies um or just just say it does it doesn't really matter just say the thing on the, the wave in you get this weird thing out okay now i've got some particular now because it is so confusing to say that oh i have a function and i'm putting a function into a function if the input inputs and outputs are functions we tend not to call them functions the, the, we tend not to call the thing that um, takes a function as input and produces a function out, we tend not to call it a function. Instead, you call it an operator or a transform. Um, I think I use both in this one. So we call it a transform is a nice, is a nice word, I think. So, uh, and it kind of sounds nice with signal processing as well. So you transform the signal. Okay, so... Here I have some uh, values of this thing. So you can have a, a think about what this might be. So what transform is this thing? So this is the transform or operator, we won't say function, that takes in the constant function two and spits out zero. Takes in the function three x minus two and spits out three. Takes in a function x squared and spits out two x. Takes in a function sine x spits, uh, I can say function or slash input. I'll say function. Takes in a function sine x spits out and so on and so forth. Now, what function is this? Will I have it written on the next page? Um, yeah, so hopefully some of you recognize that this phi, 
Now you could write something like phi is differentiated. So you could say something like that. Now this is what I'm trying to say is is not quite precise enough for our needs. Okay. So this view can be very confusing with a function input to another function. So we use the term operator. I actually like transform now to describe a function which takes as input a function produces output. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now to be more specific, we should call phi differentiate with respect to x. And we write it like this. So phi is differentiate with respect to x. And so whenever you see d dx, it means differentiate with respect to x. And so this thing down here is analogous to, say, suppose you've got a, on a different level, real number in, real number out is the cube. So this notation, d dx of e to the sine x, and we'll talk about the chain rule in a second, this should be analogous to say for the function f that you put 3 in and you get 27 out. So this d dx of e to the sine x is like f of x notation. This is the input and this is the output. You want to see it the same way. So d dx says give me an input, give me a function and I will produce you an output. Now just in terms of the coloration here, um, what we have is a little chain rule here. So uh, I think I'll just, I'll just do it with a different color. Now, one thing that might make things a bit easier for us to see is if we write e to the sine x as exponential of sine x. It's just another way of writing it. And here you can see that you've got an outside function, the exponential, and the inside function, which is sine of x. Now, it's a bit harder to see when it's e to the sine x, but you can see it there. So the chain rule says, differentiate the outside. So the derivative of exponential is exponential. The chain rule says, evaluate that at the inside. The inside is sine of x. And then times the derivative of what's inside. And the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. And then I'll just uh, rewrite it back the exponential as e to the sine x. So it's e to the sine x times cos x. So I just want to, yeah, that's uh, the chain rule there. So similarly, you can have differentiate with respect to t, differentiate with respect to r. And you might say, well, isn't that going to be obvious? But later on, what's going to happen is we have functions of two variables. So like what if you had, so this would be a function, say, for argument's sake, of t and r. So t squared times e to the tr. So two numbers in, one number out. And you can't just say differentiate because you're going to have to say, am I differentiating with respect to t or respect to r? And what does that mean? We'll, we'll talk about that uh, in later weeks. Now here we've got uh, two more examples for you to try and guess what they are. So i takes 2 to 2x plus c. Uh, it takes sine x to minus cos x plus c and x to the 4 to x to the 5 plus c. Any idea what that is? And it's complicated a bit by this plus c. Well, that would be anti-differentiate with respect to x. And the s, sending 2 to 0, sine x to minus sine x, x to the 4, 12x squared. Have a think for yourself. Pause if you want. What's that? That's the differentiate with respect to x twice. Okay. So the first operator, or transform, is the anti-differentiate with respect to x. Now, it doesn't produce a single function, but oh, yeah, this was addressed maybe. You see, the problem is the anti, um, say 2x plus c, that isn't actually a single function. It's a whole family of them, but uh, we don't have to complicate it here. And um, the second operator s, a second transform, is differentiate with respect to x twice. So we can write, and this can explain a little bit here. So here's differentiate with respect to x once, twice. And imagine multiplying those together like fractions. Now, strictly speaking, that does not make sense, but that's what the notation on the right means. d by d, d2, and then dx by dx is dx squared. And this thing on the right should be read, differentiate twice with respect to x both times. Now, you see, what we're, what's going to happen here related to this t and r above, we're going to have, we'll be talking about different differential transforms. Oh, now I like operators. 
do transforms. Um, so we'll see things that spend not on one number, but on two. I'm going to have partial uh, derivative transforms. Feck it, I like operators now. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, both. as well as products. So for example, this thing on the bottom is going to mean differentiate with respect to y first, and then with respect to x. And we're going to have this thing on the right where you see the thing on top. That symbol, by the way, is just for math. So uh, if you ask me what it is, it's just uh, we'll, we'll be calling it partial. So this partial two means differentiate twice. First respect to y and then with respect to x. Now you might have confusion about why is it first y and then x? Why isn't it the other way around? Well, we'll talk about it in time. In if you go into level 7, you'll do a lot of work with what's called the Laplace transform. And if you go into level 8, you should see the Fourier transform. So this is a big kind of um, global way of looking at things. Right. So that's some language which may or may not help you in the course of this chapter.